After seeing prices jump 130% in less than a decade, many Americans believe we are in a massive real estate bubble that is already imploding with serious damage coming later this year. The events of 2020 further embedded this view as prices simply went parabolic. For example, in the Seattle market, we saw values jump 30% in just 12 months, something that was previously thought to be impossible. This wild growth not only made many raise their eyebrows, but it also enriched thousands of speculators who profited millions in what was likely the hottest real estate market in history. This epic 12-year run in values created a new bubble, one fueled by greed, speculation, and envy, something many are calling the amateur investment bubble, and it may just be the source of the next big crash that has already begun. This is not something that is commonly talked about or even accepted as a possibility until now. To truly understand this new bubble, we have to take a step back to the last one. In 2008, the common belief was that the source of the big crash was this. The subprime mortgage market exploding, causing banking failures, and eventually the complete destruction of the entire economy by way of contagion. Movies were made about this, columns were written, regulation was passed, and the American public pointed their fingers at greedy bankers and poor people who took on high-risk loans, loans that eventually defaulted, causing an entire industry to go under. And while this was true, there is another side to 2008 that was never exposed. The truth is, is that there is significant evidence that this wasn't poor people who weren't repaying their loans, and it wasn't just subprime. Analysis done by various researchers shows that the 2008 crash was mostly caused by mom and pop investors. And if we dig into the details of this last crash, we can see a lot of similarities between then and now. You see, there have been plenty of papers written since 2008, and these papers have been swept under the rug. Important research that claims a different catalyst started the fire that lit the fuse on the entire financial system. For example, an analysis done by the National Bureau of Economic Research shows that while the commonly accepted narrative is that an expansion in the supply of credit to subprime borrowers brought down the market, new findings in this paper suggest an alternative narrative that challenges the large role of subprime credit. This analysis shows that credit growth between 2001 and 2007 was concentrated in the prime segment and debt to high-risk borrowers was virtually constant for all debt categories during this period. The rise in mortgage defaults during the troubles was concentrated in the middle of the credit score distribution and mostly attributed to real estate investors. Long story short, many experts have since found that the subprime narrative doesn't exactly match up with the fact. Even the Federal Reserve has done research that seems to suggest that it was investors that played a major role in the collapse. For example, in this New York Fed piece, they claimed that using unique credit report data, they documented a large increase in the share of purchases and subsequent delinquencies by real estate investors. It's estimated that at the peak of the market, almost half of purchase mortgage originations were associated with investors. So without boring you to death and reading through all the papers, I'll summarize it with this. Many experts claim that it was house flippers that triggered the U.S. housing market crash, not poor subprime borrowers. The evidence for this is supported by detailed data, and if you're interested, you can look through all the papers, which I've linked in the description below. And while you're there, hopefully you can take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the content thus far. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. So what does this have to do with what is happening right now? Well, the same mechanisms that brought us to a peak in 2008 seem to be happening in 2023. There is a hidden amateur investment craze that has clearly gone too far. Everyone today wants to be a landlord or flipper and for good reason. The common belief is that real estate can make you rich and if you push the envelope it can make you rich really fast. All around the internet you'll find millions of people looking into ways to buy homes with minimal money down. It's easy to buy a house, rent it out for a year, rehab it and then sell it for massive profits when the market is doing this. Just go and browse the bigger pockets forums and you'll see thousands of amateur investors talking about one thing how to grow their massive portfolios with maximum leverage. And reading through these posts, you might also wonder how it's possible that so many middle-class people can buy multiple homes. Well, as it turns out, the answer is pretty simple, but it's covered up by real estate lingo and denial. It's all credit, or what researchers call leverage. Here's an example of just how far you can take this. Let's say you lived in Seattle in 2012. You're an average middle-class or upper-middle-class worker, and you decide real estate is your ticket to riches. You watch the market collapse, but you see that Seattle is a thriving city with a strong tech base set to grow in the coming decade. You figure there is no better way to cash in on this than to buy as many homes as possible with minimal money down. Why use your own dollars when banks are willing to give you a great deal? You find a lender offering you 3.5% down with a typical FHA. Great, now you buy your first home, $300,000 
with $10,000 in cash. Not that bad. Now, without making this example too complex, let's assume a couple of reasonable things going forward. When you begin to rent your properties, you only break even on the rent, just enough to cover your expenses with the loan, taxes, insurance, and etc. This is very conservative considering most landlords are profiting monthly and generating income higher than what they pay each month. Next, let's also assume your properties appreciate at 7.35% yearly. This is fair considering that this was the rate of return from 2012 to 2023. Of course, you didn't know that back then, but you figured Seattle would perform well and everyone told you real estate only goes up. Why question the so-called experts? So what's next? Well, you find out about this simple strategy to truly expand your empire. It's five easy steps. Step one is simple. We just went over it. You buy your first house with an FHA loan. Now this next part is the longest portion of the ordeal and requires the most patience. You wait, let's say you wait four years. Now given the value has increased in line with the average, your house is now worth $400,000. So now you obtain a home equity loan to pull some money out of that appreciation. This isn't as hard as you think. You can get these types of loans with relative ease. Most banks will give you 80% on the rise in value, which means in this case, you can borrow up to $57,000. You can then use this money to buy another home with 20 percent down. You rehab it with the remaining money you saved up and then rent it out. After three more years, your two homes are now worth $500,000 each, which means you can come back to the bank for more home equity loans. You can now get $160,000 total, which is enough to give you another house. You can rinse and repeat this process until you've built up an insane amount of leverage and profit. In fact, each time you repeat the cycle, you exponentially increase the amount of money you can extract via equity loans, allowing you to expand to larger projects, even getting into the commercial space. This process is known as this and it works very well. You can get very rich doing this as long as this continues to happen. Since 2012, homes have done nothing but go up, making many of these amateur investors very rich. However, if for any reason there is a downturn in the future, the same mechanisms that allowed others to become millionaires in a decade will make them bankrupt in a month. Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on where you stand, this popular method has worked so well, it's inspired millions of others to look at real estate investing as a ticket to millions. Take for example the subreddit Real Estate Investing. Its subscriber base has grown from 13,000 in 2018 to 1.6 million in 2023. Or the website Bigger Pockets, which has received 6.1 million forum posts since inception. It's no secret that the amateur investment bubble is in overdrive. More and more younger adults are viewing real estate leverage as their get rich kind of quick scheme. Everywhere you look, there are success stories. TikTok posts like these are far too common. So I thought I was doing a lot. I had 60 rental properties and about $10 million in real estate on, but wait one minute. Got 242 units, 32 million dollars in real estate. Boom. 2,500 units, 175 million. Boom. Uh, 220 houses, 25 million. Boom. About 1,500 units, 45 million. Boom. 4,288 oh. units, 335 million dollars. Boom. 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 And this isn't me hating on those who have found success following those methods outlined previously. Like I mentioned earlier, these methods work as long as real estate keeps rising. But when extreme leverage and fraud gets added to the equation, we know what usually happens next. In every single market crash throughout history, two things have been true. There was too much borrowed money and a lot of fraud. While the example I used earlier with the Seattle market is realistic, it's relatively conservative compared to what's really going on out there. Do a bit of research and you'll find that there's thousands of investors who are operating at best in a legal gray area somewhere between fraud and greed, navigating the mortgage banking system in a way to maximize leverage, reduce interest, and escape responsibility. Today, 33% of all homes sold in the US are sold to investors, and this isn't even counting the amateur ones that own just a few properties. The hashtag real estate investing has 1.3 billion views on TikTok and everywhere you look there are thousands of young people attempting to get into this profession if you can call it that. And despite all of this everyone is ignoring the obvious red flags. Researchers have already come up with a name for this bizarre phenomenon. It's called leverage theory and it's a term to describe the fact that buy and flip investors will want to use as much leverage as lenders will allow. And if you poke around the internet long enough you will find that lenders have gotten extremely loose with the way they allow 
certain people to fund real estate projects with loose rules and little enforcement. Go down the rabbit hole and you'll see there are hundreds of ways to get around regulations, lower down payments and maximize leverage without ever appearing on a watch list or want a page. In one example, this guy right here bought a hotel and converted it to a 42 unit apartment building with zero money down. And that's just one quick example. There are many more who are taking advantage of the FHA loan program or simply lying about loan intentions in order to reduce expenses and increase limits. The same mechanisms that caused the crash in 08 are now building up in the prime market in 2023, and this system works as long as prices keep increasing. If this constant upcycle were to suddenly stop, everyone knows the house of cards would topple overnight the same way that it did in the 2007 crash. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a comment if you know any amateur investors that are taking massive leverage risks to get rich quickly.